Hi, everyone. It is Donna Reed. I traveled in Up With People 1976, and I just had a conversation with the, the man that I'm going to interview today about my lovely backdrop. You might not see this till Easter, but we're filming at Christmas, just so you, <laughs> just so you know. So uh, this morning, um, a morning here in Tucson, my guest is Scott Johnson. Welcome, Scott. Hi, Donna. Good to be here. Thank you. And um, I... As I interview people throughout this process, there's some that I know a little bit, some that I think I know well, some that I don't know at all. And you are someone who I'm not sure I've ever met in person. Anything and if we have, ever met, I don't know anything about you either. <laughs> right. So here we go. So that that's going to make this a fun interview. So Scott, <laughs> tell tell the up with people world because that's predominantly who listens to these. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. When when you saw a show, when you traveled, maybe um. If, if it was more than one year, a little bit about your jobs, just tell us about your initiation into Up With People. Okay. It was, it turned out it was kind of fateful, actually. I oh. was out of, I was out of, um, just a second, the dog wants to go out. <laughs> just a second. Oh, Charlie, are you okay? She's okay. Um, I was out of college and I yep. was, I was dating this girl, Susie, who um, told me about, I, I'm from the Bay Area in California. Okay. And um, I didn't really know what, I didn't even know what I went to college for. I got an English degree, but I had no clue. My path is like this. <laughs> Straight and narrow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was dating this girl, Susie, and she told me about Up With People, and they were coming to town, and that my host, my parents should host. And and um, so this was in like, January of, eight, of 1983. And I went to a show and I was impressed with just the kind of the pure positive energy that's coming off the stage and the international aspect of it and the yeah. peace promoting part of it. And and I'd been writing songs since I was a, a teenager. And oh. a lot of my music happened to be very kind of upbeat and, and very kind of life affirming and stuff. And so it was just kind of like, oh, this is cool. And I ended up... Um, interviewing and getting accepted and traveling that summer so it wasn't too far away I was just like five five months away from when I first saw a show how much was tuition when you traveled do you remember I think it might have been like 80 8300 or something does that sound right I okay. I don't remember. yeah I, I I don't know I, I barely remember my year but I just I always like to pay attention to see what the increases are yeah for. yeah yeah so anyway, so I, so I, you know, I traveled in 83 D um, and actually the second semester, um, my cast director was Miriam. Oh, uh, yeah. It so tell, sounds... tell the world who Miriam is. <laughs> Miriam is my wife. <laughs> in that whole, Mary... we don't date and up with people thing. Miriam okay. Kaiser uh, from Belgium. Um, in fact, actually, um, we didn't start talking to the last few weeks of the year and it was after the year that. I had um, I had invited her out to California before she went back to Belgium after the next staging in Tucson, and then that's when the romance started. So, so this is like the the pedaling and going. No, 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 no. We didn't date on the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, we 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 really did. I was. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, but but what makes it faithful is that um, several years before all this happened. Miriam was in some high school in New York as a, I don't know what she, what her job was at the time and for up with people. And she oh, okay. was interviewing this girl um, and accepted this girl into up with people. And it was Susie that I dated. <laughs> I was like going, this is where this story is going. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my so, God. So Miriam accepted Susie into the program years before I even knew about Up With People. Susie introduced me to Up With People. Wow. I traveled with Miriam and um Oh and my gosh. We are here. <laughs> so so had you finished college then? Were you like 22 or 23 or Yeah, I was older. I was like, I think by the time I tr my I traveled as a student, I was 80. I was uh, 24. Four 24. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I tra right. traveled for a year and Mike actually, we had some big shows. We had like, we went from straight from Tucson to um, the Kennedy Center. We did a big show with the National wow. Orchestra. 
Um, and then we went to Europe. Um, I did PR in Ghent. No, yeah, it was it was Ghent. And um, the cast went to Germany for a while, and then they came back, and we did it another month and a half or something in in, in Belgium. Belgium. So my tour, my tour was the U.S. and Belgium. <laughs> That's a whole lot of. I was like us in Texas, only you spent a whole lot of time in Belgium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So both, yeah, both parts of the French and the Flemish part. Um, nice. So yeah, and then and then I um, I came back to the Bay Area in, in California, and I worked for a bit. And this is when Miriam and I were starting to current date and and long distance. And um, yeah, and then. Uh, I got a job as a PR rep, did the following year, mostly in Europe. And okay. So I was all over, mostly Europe, um, from Ireland to Belgium to Finland and um, nice. Denmark. And yeah, so, so and then um, I did that. And then I went off and did other things. And then we were living, we got married in Tucson and in uh on a Monday afternoon at the Tucson courthouse with Emma Jean Gerard, the judge that Miriam <laughs> mistook as the cleaning lady. <laughs> what a romantic story. We're very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but um, so we were we were living in, in Tucson for a few years together and then moved up, um, went up with people, moved up to Broomfield, Colorado. In the 90s, in okay. 1993. And okay. then um, I was work. Then I I was working for a few years as um, and I'm in charge of their publications, their external and internal. Oh, okay, okay. Um, from the, the annual report to newsletters to different things and and things like that. So okay, so uh, because I traveled in the bicentennial and they did an album like in '75 or whatever, we didn't really have a show name. We just called it the bicentennial year. What was your show? Right. It was called Stand Together. Stand Together. Yeah. Okay. So I, I try to, um, only because I've done a lot of reunions. I only traveled one year, Scott. I traveled 76. Right. And then I yeah. was an aero rep on the BOG. But because I've been in Tucson, because I've been to a lot of reunions, I do recognize at least the three songs that are sung every year at a reunion. Do you uh -huh. do you have some favorite songs from your show? And I I... You know, like yesterday I talked to somebody again and she talked about roads and she traveled in 2013. And I'm like, OK, we all know everybody likes roads. So tell me tell me what you uh -huh. like, what songs you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had Let the River Flow. That was a good one. Oh, that was like the, the final song of our show. That was really good. Yeah. Um, I sang one called Walk Lightly. I don't know if you know that one. I don't. I don't. What are what are some of the words to that? Oh, it's it's basically kind of a, a talking, singing kind of song. It's I it's I def, it's definitely I think comes from Paul Caldwell. I, <laughs> because he talks. I don't know if he was the main, I don't know if he was the main kind of instigator for that song, but it seems like a Paul song for sure. <laughs> but it's basically you know. One day I was uh, somebody I was walking along the beach. I met this old timer, and um, basically mm -hmm. his message was it was a wise, wise message of like walk lightly on the earth, you know, uh, be kind, to the earth, that kind of nice, thing. nice. Um, it is. It's fascinating to talk to the writers, and and actually, just the other week I interviewed four of the guys that were in the Arizona band, and that was pretty fun to first of all hear their camaraderie and you know ribbing of each other but simultaneously where a song come from how they developed them and as a musician it's it's interesting to know where those come from and talking to Paul I, I hate to say this I always compare it to talking like what were the Beatles thinking when they wrote some of their songs we mm -hmm. for generations try to figure that out so so what was happening in our world when Paul when they wrote that song you know it, because it yeah. feels it sounds timeless right? It, it sounds right. timeless, but, yeah. but something happened um, that put those thoughts in their head that year, you know? Right, create, right, right. To create that song. I mean, it was, in, I said, it posed an environmental type of song. Yes. But, you know, yeah. Um, so it's been on the public consciousness, yeah. since, at least. Interesting. users. All right. So I also, I forget yeah. to ask people this, but I did costumes for three summers. So, um, which was like 78, 79, 80. What were your costumes, Scott? 
I got to remind you, they were kind of embarrassing now. We had jeans and they were tucked inside boots. Really? What, what, yeah, it was not good. Did you have like the puffy? Things. Did your body suit? Um, yeah, there suit? was the, the women had puffy stuff, um, dresses and things. And the, we had this. This hideous thing. Um, it had stripes on the, the shirt and it, it velcroed in the crotch. I just remember that. So was it that blue? It was, was it the blue and white one? Like there was a pink. No, it was like we had it was like yellow and blue oh, stripes, I, maybe. There were a couple color yeah. combos that I was not a fan of, but you know, that's no, no, it, it, we weren't setting any trends, I think. <laughs> It is so funny. Uh, up, with, up with people's never been hip. <laughs> and we were we were proof of that. <laughs> you know what's funny? So I interviewed um my son and then I just talked to another, so a 13 cast member, a couple of those, a couple of 15s. And this was like a bring your own. We're gonna have this palette. So bring three shirts, you know, to Denver and, right. and we're gonna choose your color. Yeah. And but they were their own clothes. And it was kind of fascinating talking to my own son about it because it was questions that I don't. I never asked him. He said that he felt like everyone appreciated choosing their own clothes because they felt comfortable in their clothes. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. thought that was interesting compared to a show where someone here, for me, it was here, you're orange, here, you're yellow, here, you're green. And, right. and, and it wasn't a choice. It, so I, I thought that was, that was kind of interesting because we traveled when Somebody else kind of said, here you go. This is your thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, everything evolves. And uh, I think <laughs> it was yeah. good the way it evolved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So are you retired now, Scott, or are you still working? Or um, I'm more or less retired, but World Singing Day is where I put most of my, my attention. I So I usually... Um, start in the early spring and work on it and it's uh for those who don't know i founded world singing day um in 2012 and it's a, a global singing celebration to bring people together in their communities and, and is it world them. world singing day.com because i remember or what's the dot org dot org okay world okay. Day .org. yeah okay so, you so tell everybody what that is so yeah, it's it is this this uh, singing celebration that happens around the world on the third Saturday in October every year. So it was not too long ago, October fifteenth uh, this year in twenty twenty two. Next year will be uh, October twenty first, twenty twenty three, and um, people gather in their communities and sing together for the joy of singing together and to this build a sense of community and. When it's done right, it's just pure joy. And it's so fun to see all ages singing everything from, you know, Rolling Stones to Beatles to current hits. And um, and it's for everybody. It's not for just for singers or musicians. It's for everybody. I mean, if you sing like, go to a baseball game and sing, and sing Take Me Out for the Ball Game. At the everybody sings. Was, everybody sings. Yeah. And that's what it is. That's what it's like. So um, yeah. it's not a competition. It's not a performance. Um, and uh, yeah, what inspired we, we, you to do that, Scott? Like, what what had you back in 2011 or something decide to do this in 2012? Yeah, well, I think it probably goes back when I started writing music as a teenager in high school, and uh, music was always my way of getting in touch with that joyful part of myself. And I think in a way, this is kind of World Singing Day is an extension of that desire that we all have, I think, to get in touch with that joyful part of ourselves and, and with each other. And it's such an easy way to do. And, you know, I, I also, back in 2003, I, I co-founded something called the Positive Music Association, which promoted artists and music that had universal life-affirming messages to it. Mm. Um, so I ran that for a while. And then in 2000. 11, I had a conversation with a few of our PMA members and we're saying, oh, we should do a, a PMA day where everybody, all of our members around the world sang on, perform on that day and sing or something. And then I thought, hmm, why don't we just open it up to everybody? <laughs> yeah. And 
World Singing Day. That's kind of, and I, it's like, it's for everybody. It's not just for musicians or singers. It's, it's, uh, yeah, for all of humanity. And it, it really is. And that's, I love the simple, the simple elegance of it. It's just like, let's get together and sing one day out of the year beyond religion and politics and right. whatever. Right. And just enjoy and have a, have a positive human experience together and go, oh, wow. Okay. This is, that was beast. together. And yeah. it's fun. Yeah. And it's, it's a safe, so, you know, it's a safe environment. So the first year, um, you're in Colorado. Did you just like talk to up with people, friends? Did you, how did you, how'd you do that first year? Um, first I looked on an international date calendar and I, I, there was not much going on the third Saturday and third week of October. It was like a global <laughs> thing. <huh? laughs> well, yeah, it was nice because it was, it was in the fall time in the Northern hemisphere. So the weather wouldn't be too extreme. And also it was springtime in the Southern hemisphere. So like Australia, New Zealand and stuff. And yeah, it wouldn't be too severe for outdoor things. And, um, yeah. And so um, I actually, yeah, called up some of my musician friends around the world and said, hey, would you just sing on this day? This is the idea. And maybe the first year, maybe got 100 people to to sing and some some up with people, friends yeah. and stuff. And then yeah. the next, I was still working um, full time at a, at a company. So I didn't have a lot of energy to do, but I, I, I kind of laid the groundwork. So the first few years was basically just kind of slowly growing that way. And then in 2015, um, we did our first public event here in Boulder, which was uh, right in the center of town. It's on uh, this pedestrian mall called Pearl Street. It's yeah. like the heart of town. It's a public, yeah. public pedestrian place. And we just, we turned up the speakers loud. We handed out handed out lyric booklets. We invited local choirs and stuff to be our song leaders on a little stage, mostly for just kind of a focal point for right. people walking right. by. And, stuff. and we just sang together for an hour and a half or two. And um, it was, again, it was just pure joyful. It was just pure joy. And it was so fun. And um, that was a nice template that we used and, and shared with other people around the world. And, and, and now it's, you know, from Perth, Australia to Malaysia to Europe and all over. So, so I I glanced at um after after the uh, interview on TV, I I went to the website and I looked a little bit. It's it seems like either a song was created or there was one specific song that everybody worked on and sang. Well, yeah. Else, how did what was that about? Right. Did, yeah. So so hosts hosts we have volunteer hosts and who organize these events in different cities yeah. around the world. They can sing. They can choose whatever songs are appropriate, popular in their city or culture or country. Yeah. But yeah. we do it. We do choose one song each year that is the song of the year that we invite people to sing. So we make montage videos of of people singing the song from around. I the saw world. that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so you know that uh, I've I've chosen popular some popular songs like I think my first year when I called up my friends in 2012 yeah <laughs> i said uh, can you sing uh, with a little help from my friends just sing that and record it and let's share that and then and we've uh we, a couple of years ago we did here comes the sun um and uh, then i've also taken um i've written some i'm a songwriter and i've written right. some songs one year i um was called the song was called ode to ode to song and it was a it was a the melody of Ode to Joy, Ode to Joy. Ode to Joy. And I just took just the phrases from popular songs and I made a coherent uh, lyric out of it, basically a celebration of song. Nice. Um, called Ode to, Ode to Song. Um, and um, um, so in this, this year, it was, I took the old Latin song, Dona Nobis Pacem, Yes, 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 yes. So, um, and then I and I just I put some created some words. I worked with a a really talented uh, musician. She's a Berkeley. She works at Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Okay. Um, and she she just arranged it and she produced it and recorded it and everything. And so we we provided that those tracks and the music and the sheet music and stuff on our website. So 
we invited people to sing that song. Nice. Um, nice. Anyway, and it's, it was called Sing With Me. Um, so, so, yeah. Has anybody in Tucson done this? Because I, I shared it with uh, my piano player from church. And it seems like musicians, they all work like four jobs. <laughs> so, you know, the right, people that are right. full-time <laughs> musicians. But I wondered with the number of alumni here, if anybody's if anybody's done anything here. You know, I don't I don't know if any alumni I have. I know I think there's something has happened at a school. I forget maybe a couple of years a few years ago or something maybe before COVID. Okay. Um, I think there was there I forget I forget the person and she was a music yeah. teacher at a school and but yeah. um but it, it to me it makes sense for <laughs> alumni to to join in because it's a yeah. you know it's a it's easy it's a lot of fun the the message of bringing people together through music is there. It's yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, so I invite people to to uh, go to our website, check out like, you know, there's something we have some resources about how to host and and things like that. And you, it can be a, a small thing, like just inviting your neighbors or friends over for a potluck right. and on that yeah. day and singing and maybe taking a few photos and video clips and sharing it on social media. Um, right. Right. Or what we do, we invite the whole public, the whole. Yeah. Of Boulder, Whoever wants come to down come. and and hundreds, you know, uh, probably we've had maybe over a thousand people at, at uh, 2019, but um, just that's just awesome. Come down and sing, yeah. But it's uh, yeah, very it's been, cool. It's been great to see. I mean, yeah, there's there was a big um, before before COVID, there was a big event in Perth, Australia. Actually, like two or three events in Perth. Certain cultures like. Glum on this, glum onto this a little faster than others. Yeah, yeah. That maybe are used to like singing together. Um, there's some cultures where that it's it's foreign concept. I had a, a woman come up to me after one of our events in Boulder. She was from Italy. She goes, "This is so foreign to us." I mean, because they take their singing so seriously there. Right, right. They just you know? anybody. <laughs> <laughs> got Bocelli and all these great right, singers. Right, right. They have these and singers. So, you know, the idea of just singing, just regular yeah. people singing together. Um, right, right. It's kind of a new concept. That's, and uh, and I mentioned this to I mentioned this to people, and a lot of people, some people go, "Oh, you don't want me to sing. You don't want me to be." So, no, you're exactly who I want to come because once you experience it, nobody can really hear you sing because you you hear everybody singing together. Right. right? But we do we. We do turn up the speaker. We play the, well, we, you can do any way. You can have live music if you want. We tend to, we do uh, the original, original recordings that everyone's familiar with and comfortable with. Yeah. So we just play that and have lyric booklets and you, you hear everybody singing together, but, and you turn up the speakers loud enough. So you, yeah. you're not self-conscious about your singing, but you hear, can still hear everybody. So yeah. That's me. Yeah. That can, can kind of a kind of a key to, to make it, <laughs> making it comfortable and um, well and like like you said it if you're at a ball game or um how many uh, who doesn't sing neil diamond's hands such a you know whatever right, everybody, right. everybody yeah, sings yeah. that sweet caroline yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean you know, think nobody like has a big karaoke either. right you know <laughs> yeah it's, it's group karaoke i mean i i've never done karaoke um i would have to get really drunk probably to do it i mean i i do because i it's I don't want to, I'm not a, I'm not really a performer. I've performed, but I'm, I'm more of a songwriter and that's okay. how I more identify, but, but I, no, I, I think, um, yeah, it is. It's like group karaoke, but it's, it's just, uh, my, it's, it's, my son ran karaoke here for five or six years at a bar, uh, in, in Midtown kind of, and, um, especially on the holidays when everybody's home and people get together and drink a lot and stuff. And then everybody thinks they're a singer. And there's certain songs like Bohemian Rhapsody and stuff that everybody wants to sing. And and, right. and he'd be and he'd be like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's part of being at a karaoke bar, right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's kind of that's kind of the charm of that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is. So um I don't know how much attention um or I'm talking about the new up with people. My mind is transitioning now into uh -huh. uh, the future of up with people. And have you had a chance to meet yet with uh, Seema or any of the people in Denver related to the yeah, future? Yeah, we went, okay. we went for a hike together uh, a month or so ago, and I'm actually good. meeting with her tomorrow. Oh, good, good. Um, just to talk about ways, to, uh, you know, to collaborate with maybe with World Singing Day and some other well, things. She's 
And that is that is part. Of, so I have been sort of ending all of these with a similar question. So like, and I'll I'll get to it, but I want to finish this thought. Um, I, I've asked like, what would what would you tell you know a twenty year old who is debating about this versus couch surfing versus exchange home, you know things like that up with people. But what Seema talked to us about on Sunday um, a little bit more further was this overviewing voices title with silos of abilities and how could you as an alumni contribute to the future of up with people mm -hmm. now i asked giselle yesterday and she's like i don't even know what the future of up with people looks like but here's my skill set and i think right. that's what seem is looking for right right yeah what what so maybe you'll know more after your hike but what uh what do you think that you as a mentor, as an alumni might be able to contribute to help an 18 to a 23 or 24 year old who wants to participate in the new up with people? And what might you tell them about how this could be different than anything else they'll ever do? That's a hard because we really don't, I mean, I have, I have, I've heard little things, but I don't really know what the program is going to be. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um. Yeah, I yeah I I don't know enough okay. to be able to. I mean, if it was the old, well, I would, so what would you old. say? What would you say? Even if even if the performance didn't exist, if the performance never existed and you never went on stage and did a show, but your the whole rest of your up with people experience happened. Yeah. How yeah. would you sell that to a kid? Um. How would I sell that to a kid? I don't know. Um. I mean, just there's just it's traveling with a whole bunch of different people from different places in the world with different viewpoints and understandings of of the world and different religious backgrounds and non-religious backgrounds and staying with those yeah. families. I mean, that was just a great exposure for me. Yeah, me too. Um, I mean, I was I was out of I was out of college. So I've been I I traveled in Europe before, and so um, I wasn't super green. But um, but again, I yeah I didn't know people from different these different countries necessarily. Um, and now Don't I have for me. I think it, I think that maybe that certainly the networking and the friendship that have lasted for a long time. That's yeah, really a big thing. And we try to, we, we our, our kids, both our kids didn't choose to travel. Yeah. Um, they, they were kind of, well, like one was had already or just graduated from college. And, and anyway, they were kind yeah. of different, different places. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, it's just, I don't know enough what the, the what but, yeah. is going to be. I have, again, I have ideas, but it sounds like it's, you know, it's a much shorter program. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, yeah. but it's, you know, I, I like Seema's energy. So I'm looking forward to seeing how, I do how things, things progress. So, all right. So um, Sheila Detloff, who traveled in 84, tells me um, it, we, we she was one of the ones that helped start this event with me. And she goes, Donna, you need to have a rapid fire. So rapid fire doesn't always go really rapid. But <laughs> if um, if you were to tell everyone here, did you eat, taste something for the first time on the road that you loved, 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 or that you hated, hated, hated? And or is there a country or a place you've never been that's on your bucket list? Well, I I don't, I in Belgium, I never had Vitloaf before, which is- I don't Belgium. even know what that is. It's Belgian endive, but it, there's oh. a, you make salads out of it, but yeah. you also make this dish called vitloaf. And uh, I've actually made it here, and it's I'm, it was, I was impressed with myself. That was good. It's it's using this vitloaf, this Belgian endive, and with ham and Gruyere cheese and a bechamel sauce. Nice. Um, yeah, it's very good. So I, I had that for the first time with a, my host family in Ghent, I believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that was good. But, yeah, yeah, that was something yeah. that. Uh, um, and clearly, you spent a lot of time in Belgium. Where haven't you been that you might like to go, Scott? Um, New Zealand. I like definitely like to go to New Zealand, Australia. Um, mm -hmm. I have some, actually, some also some open people, photographer friends. I'm a photographer too, and and I just Fun. can't wait to go there with my camera and take some pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah another yeah. form, another form of art. So, but no, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's lots of 
you know, I like to go back to Alaska. I like to go back to, uh, I like to go to Patagonia. Have, we haven't really been to, we haven't been to South America. I um, haven't been to South America either. I've been to Mexico, yeah. but not South yeah, yeah. America. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. So. Um, the, I mean, those are the, those are the top, I mean, New Zealand, Australia would be my first yeah. fix. When, um, when we were really in the midst of COVID and I say that because it's not over, it's not ending, I don't think, but but when we people weren't flying, I did a road trip. I traveled about 5,200 miles and I visited some people that I've always wanted to visit that aren't on the way to places I normally go. So one of them was like Stuart and Regine Shepherd because North Platte isn't on the way for me to go to anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was every place that I ever go, there's something that you learn. There's something that you gain. There's something that you didn't know about that place, you know? And uh, for me, it's a combination of the place and the people. And because of up with people relationships, I feel like that always exists for us right. because you yeah. and having done the host family thing, seeing and learning about places through the eyes of the locals, like you're, you tasting something with a host family, right? Right. Yeah. You might have yeah. not gone into a restaurant and ordered, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. well, our time is about up. Um, when I, uh, post this, I told you we'll probably go live after the first of the year with this one. Uh, but I want to make sure that we include the link to world singing day and stuff so that people have that available. So I will make sure that I, I add that. And, uh, thank you for, do you know that, do you know that Tom Costello is, he's an alum? Yes. Yeah. I found that out only because of the interview that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So our wives, she, he, um, his his wife is from Belgium. He's the Boone family. I don't know if you knew the Boone yeah. family. All yeah. four of the Boone kids traveled, but Austria Boone. But. And and my friends over there that I just visited are the Stroy family. Um, okay. So uh, you may or may not traveled with any, but they were also very involved early on with uh, up with people and stuff. Yeah. So there, Belgian had a lot of a lot of people that joined uh-huh. us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well, I'm fun. I'm I'm writing musical too. It was just brand new to me. But um, it has a world singing to the theme to it as far nice. as singing is for everyone. And, and So this and is fun. Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. We can get the rest of yeah. more <laughs> about Scott Johnson. That's awesome. Well, Scott, I my son is in Colorado um, getting married up there next year. And so, you know, maybe one of these days we meet. I hope we I hope nice. we do. We have, we have a lot of mutual friends. And yeah, we're coming down to Tucson for a month in March. Well, so. Let's get together. I would love to I'd love yeah, yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you too. You too. All right. Well, thank well, you thanks. for your time. I'm going to end you. this and then we've got just like one more minute, but I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks, guys. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Donna.